I'm Christopher Asaro, president of Whole Construction. I'm proud to announce that the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, in partnership with American Airlines and RW Airports, has announced $125 million commercial redevelopment of JFK's Terminal 8. As the project's construction partner, Hold Construction is pleased to partner with URW to introduce our new information and technical assistance program designed to connect you to opportunities available across the 24-month redevelopment of Terminal 8, all part of the Port Authority's $19 billion airport redevelopment program that is transforming New York's airport system. Working with our partners at the Port Authority, American Airlines, URW, and Phoenix Infrastructure, we have designed a special series of programs that will help you learn more about the project, the business and contracting opportunities that are right for your company and how your business can participate. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to partnering together. Hello and welcome to today's session, Retail and Food and Beverage, the Art and Science of Managing Buildouts and Food Logistics. Retail and food and beverage buildouts, particularly in airports, differ from other types of general interior construction projects and require managing multi-phase logistics. This session today overviews what is required for working on these types of projects and how to set your firm up for success. Today, you'll learn how to present your firm's capability in this area, even if you have limited experience in retail and food and beverage construction. Then we'll discuss best practices for reviewing drawings, completing takeoffs, providing alternate materials to control costs and schedule, and other factors for submitting bids. You'll also have an understanding of field operations and the challenges that come with it, and navigate loading dock delivery, material storage, airport job site access, work schedules, and more. Hi, I'm George Cedeno. I am a senior estimator at the Aviation Department for Hold Construction in New York. Hello, my name is Ronald Duarez. I'm the Director of Tenant Coordination for URW Airport, uh, working at Terminal 8 Project. I am James O'Brien, Project Executive with Cold Construction in the Boston office. James, how do retail and food and beverage build-outs in airports differ from the other type of build-outs outside of the airport? So the overall principles of food and beverage build-outs remain consistent. However, space constraints and require efficient methods of placing MEP equipment. It requires detailed coordination with other tenants, with other um, facets within the airport, IAT, Massport, whatever the port authority is. Um, you're also dealing with extremely stringent security re regulations um, enforced by those airport authorities, work plans, details of the construction, that all, those are all items that have to be in place and, and detailed out far in advance of getting boots on the ground. And what project management capabilities are required to work on retail and food and beverage buildouts? And how can construction firms show confidence in these sectors? I think that you need someone who's highly motivated to bring all the groups together because it's very important that you have the architect, the engineers, everyone on board and, and talking from day one. You can't have it can't be something that's just, oh, I sent an email, they'll get to it. It's something you've got to follow up. You've got to speak to them. You, you need everyone's input on a daily basis. Airports are chaotic environments. And you need someone who can kind of wrangle that in. Ronald, what role does URW play in coordination with the GC and the tenants? Great question. Uh, so the URW's primary role and purpose is really to present shepherd and guide to each tenant through our design. We have a design uh, cr criteria guideline that's actually going to set you up for success by following our guidelines. Um, also permitting through uh, Port Authority of New York, New Jersey. Um, as, uh, as a uh, jurisdictional um, that they have, they, they are their own department of buildings. They have their own department of police, fire department. Uh, so they really uh, focus on what the life and safety of the airport is working here. The construction process, I mean, working in a live ter terminal, as, uh, as James was mentioning, how different it is on the street. Uh, and also the construction schedule and the how aggressive we're going to be looking at our schedule in order to achieve these timelines. The last place really is the safety, is uh, uh, how it is to work in, in the terminal, to, especially for our passengers, our airline personnel. Thank you. James, 
kind of going off of what Ronald said with all the risks and all the items that we have to be kind of cognizant of inside the airport. What are some risks that inherit in airport and food and beverage build outs and how can those risks be man mitigated? I think the, the main risks are, are safety, security, um, tools. Uh, I mean, it, there is massive risk as far as a tool or a knife or something getting onto a plane. So those are probably the main risks we face on, on a daily basis. Also escorting, uh, making sure that people are properly badged, personnel has the right, you know, knows where they're supposed to go and where they're not supposed to go. Those are the, uh, the main risks we face on a daily basis. So the main risk for the airport is the passengers, it's being a live airport, you know, live passengers, us not interfering with it. And then firms have to understand the security and the safety portion as well and, and how to mitigate those risks within their companies, correct? Correct. Perfect. Um, George, what are some best practices uh, that you can suggest when bidding on retail and food and beverage build outs, especially in working in the airport? So for me, the, big, the biggest um, suggestion I can I can provide is trans transparency. One of the biggest um, issues that we have when bidding uh, retail food and beverage is that most of these items have to be precise. So if you have, for example, a, a product that's equal to a specified, we, we would really want to know um, right from the beginning what you're pro providing and and the best thing to, to convey that is through communications. I use platforms like Building Connected. That actually helps me talk to, to every one of the subcontractors um, in a one-on-one -on -one basis because it directs a message to me, but it also directs a message to the project managers and whoever, whoever's in my team. The last thing is a clear estimate. So if you have a, a clear estimate with the lines with lines showing what you're providing what you're qualifying what you're excluding those are the items that that will get my attention and we'll start that dialogue and then we'll uh, move forward on on sustaining a sustaining the, the bid as is or we'll we'll suggest or request further more uh pricing or more of a spec on that but yes transparency to me is the biggest one so takeaway from that for the audience would be communication, there's questions, if there's something that they're not sure to reach out to the estimators um, and then just capture all the items on their uh, bidding, correct? Correct. Perfect. Um, next question we have is for Ronald. Ronald, what is the main consideration for tenants working in a live terminal? Passengers, air operations, cleanliness. Um, can you elaborate on those specifically? Sure. Uh, so the number one we got to remember is that we're working in a live active terminal. Uh, this is, so working in TA is we have we have uh, active passengers coming through TSA. They they're here because they're traveling through a vacation business, right? So we got to make sure that we are we're, we're uh, allowing their experience of traveling through the terminal is through that's the number one, right? They want to get to their gate, right? So what is this, that's what's more important to them is that make sure that they're getting on in their plane to get to their their next destination. So we really need to really ensure that we're really following the rules of the terminal, right? As, as our, both our teammates here worked out, they said, look, it's always uh, what's the, the securities, what's the getting around the, uh, the terminal, right? Following the rules of the, of the terminal is really important, right? Uh, the biggest thing for us is also don't set off a fire alarm. The fire alarm is going to stop the airlines. It's going to shut down the terminal. So if you don't want to be on Fox News, CNN, or any of those type of newscasts, we do not want to be there. So let's not make sure we're not setting off fire alarms because that is a big detrimental, detrimental to the airport. Cleanliness. It's really, you're, even though we're working construction, there's dust everywhere. But this is also somebody's house that we're actually with the passengers, the, the airport terminal here. So we want to make sure that our space is outside of the, the doorway is, is always clean. Have walk-off mats, you know, the sticky mats. Make sure that there's a brush room uh, so that all the boots are, as well as cleanliness. So we don't want to have um, our tools to be dirty, right? We don't want to use the bathrooms as the cleaning tools, but we got to make sure that we have the, all the tools, everything clean before exiting and entering into the terminal. That is also the escorting, the badging is we got to ensure because they every security is going to be looking at who's badged, who's escorting, right? Do you are why are you on the jetway? You know, if you're driving your vehicle, we'll make sure you have an escort on there. 
And lastly, it's, it's really the work hours. So we can work 24 hours and seven days a week, but just keep the noise level at a minimum. And also just ensure that you know, our passengers are not staying. What's that construction going on? We want to make a good experience. We want a passengers to enjoy coming here, but understand, hey, we're making a better terminal for them. I think the other item too as well that the uh, firm should keep in uh, mind is sometimes the hours may not be during the day. Some of them may be on the night shift, correct? Yes, that is correct. So even though you are you might be, uh, depending on the demo work, it, it might be done uh, three, four hours, right? So you want to have to get all that work within a con uh, matter of hours. But we also want to make sure that you are, you're building in this timeline. Uh, deliveries, if you're going to be bringing deliveries through here. There, there we have set up uh, at points of entry point for the delivery to come here, but we want to make sure that it is marked during certain hours and we'll be able to work with you on what time and uh, that you're allowed to bring in material. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ronald, for that. Um, James, what are the key considerations for managing and maintaining schedules in the context of airport retail and uh, food and beverage build outs? I think it still all falls back to collaboration and to play off what George said earlier with um, what is being provided, making sure that if client is providing something like the food service equipment, that is something that some food service equipment vendors and suppliers, they've never worked in an airport environment before. So making sure that you get all those players together, have an understanding of what is needed and when it's needed and making sure that all that's coordinated. So close coordination, it's something I keep bringing up and it's something that I find so important um, in the airport environment, making sure that you're coordinating with every single piece of the puzzle. And I think that's the major difference between airport versus street construction is we're dealing with many different you know, stakeholders, clients, there's different processes. We have to go from the top to the bottom. And as the GC, we have to radiate that to everybody. So I think that's the major thing where airport is you're dealing with more uh, more teams than if you were just to do it on the street of New York City. And then our last question is for George. George, we always get these types of questions. Um, does airport retail and food beverage construction require any specific type of insurance? And if so, mm -hmm. usually what's the average across the board for uh, coverage? So for the for a majority of projects, we have the insurance is similar to any other project. Uh, general liability works fine if your umbrella is where it meets to our criteria. We usually have a criteria that we send out there are projects that have this have OSIP or CSIP, and that will be taken care of by by uh, by owners or a contractor. However, that does not mean free of insurance. It just means a part of this insurance will be taken care of by the by other people, either the client or the uh, contractor. So, with that in mind, we have uh, we usually give out guidelines, and they come out usually with the bid package in during the, the initial bid. Um, an invitation to bid. Usually we'll tell you what you we need to provide. We, we provide you and you, you provide us. So that all comes out in the beginning of the package and every project is different. It's not the same for everyone. It's not one project is the same from terminal one to terminal eight. They're all they're all very different and depend, depends on each client. Perfect. And kind of to go off on that a little bit is um, for the audience, don't be set on a specific type of insurance for all the projects at the airport. Again, like George said, it's dependent on the client and, and what they have as if there's OSIP, if there's CSIP, if, if there's a standard type of insurance. Um, just be cognizant of that when you guys are going through your bidding, when you are bidding. And if there are specific questions in regards to insurance, reach out to the GC that you will be working with. And yeah. they are the ones that will have the manual that explain to you what's required and so forth. So thank you, the three of you for joining us today. Um, this was very informative. And now let's go to our live Q&A. everyone and thank you for joining us today. So we have a couple of questions and I'm going to start off with Ronald. So Ronald, how do you manage deliveries, airport access and other coordination requir requirements? 
Great question. Uh, so a lot of all the tenants are, and the tenants and the GCs are going to be really responsible for just abiding all the security and the construction rules and regulations of the terminal. All right. So we got to ensure is one, we got to have the COIs, make sure that uh, the insurances meet the limitations of port requirements, especially entering into the terminal, but also into the air side when uh, the trucks have to go into the air side where the airplanes are. Right. We're going to have designated stage areas right, where the materials can be dropped off. Dumpster locations are going to be placed as well as there. Um, and then we're going to have uh, selected doors for entering into the terminal and also the freight elevators, right? So we're, we're not, we don't want to use every elevator. We want to use specific ones to ensure that we can we have clear clear passageways to our workspaces. Um, and if you're no badging, let's say if you your subcontractors don't have a badge, well don't don't worry. We have a, we've hired a company called ABM which we partner with and they will be able to escort and you'll be able to work with them and ensure that uh, everybody's um, secured and everybody's uh, on the on the terminal. Uh, there's as well as uh, some TSA checkpoints or we're, we're gonna be getting through checkpoints that we have to go through TSA. Uh, it'd be specific times for that. Uh, but overall it was like, we wanna ensure that uh, deliveries are manageable or get here on time. Again, we're interactive at the terminal. So just ensure that, you know, we get um, timing wise there uh, on time. And then for the airport access portion, um, I, I know sometimes there's re uh, certain required documents that are required. What are some of the documents that are required for these employees to go through the TSA check-in to perform the work? So you're going to be uh, submitting in a security plan uh, that tells us exactly who's going to be entering. Uh, it tells us what company, what are you delivering, and those will be reviewed, all be all submitted to your W when you're submitting those uh, requests to get through uh, TSA. Perfect. And second question we have for you, Ronald, is what are the basic steps people need to consider for design build in an airport setting? Yeah, so this is uh, perfect. Uh, we, if you're um, retail or food and beverage, right, you're going to start off getting, you're going to need to, uh, what, do, what is it? You're going to need to hire an architect, right? Uh, we need to get architects who are very familiar with the Port Authority process. Um, we've actually worked with the Port Authority closely. Uh, we've uh, worked out so we can mainstream the review process for expediting, right, uh, to ensure our reviews aren't uh, lagging like there's typical TAA. So we worked a process where we've uh, short time to frame and we can be able to start construction once we get the approval. And as long as the architect has devel uh, developed a good set of drawings, we'll be able to start construction. It's also for, uh, very important that the contractors are also very familiar with the Port Authority and the process of the, again, the insurances and working in an active airport. So we also set up the, our, uh, our construction spaces are for retailers and for beverage to, we've given guidelines. We've given the design criteria we've developed. Uh, we have a technical manual that is gonna help all the in architects to design the spaces for, um, in their spaces for their use. We got the construction rules and regulations. And lastly, of course, the TCAP from the Port Authority. That's their Bible. They need to so ensure that the contractors, architects are, are very familiar with the, uh, the manuals. Uh, we can easily provide them for you, and you can always request them through the emails uh, that we have provided. Uh, but every, those, every, the process is really set up for all the tenants to be successful, right? We want to make sure that we, look, you join partnership with URW for this airport here. So we want to ensure that we drive you for success. Great. That was a great answer. Um, James, next question is, are there specific restrictions or requirements for retail businesses in airports? So that's a good question. As, as far as the construction standpoint, uh, to go off what Ronald had said, uh, the aircraft safety, I mean, the uh, safety plan is something that's super important as far as coordinating um, our laydown areas, uh, access to site, how we're getting stuff in to, to actually do the build, um, avoiding the aircraft safety zones, closely coordinating that with the authority having jurisdiction and just working together to make sure that we have all those uh, restrictions accounted for at the beginning of the project. Awesome. And then I know sometimes the GCs on these projects, especially in the airport, they'll get all the items that are required, all the documentations, and then they'll trickle that down to their subcontractors once they award. 
Um, so be on the lookout for that when if you do get awarded, whether it's with Holt or with the other GCs for the tenants specifically, they'll send you all the paperwork that you're required to fill out. Um, and it'll have all the information, including access and, and um, security measures, lay down areas and, and so forth. How will inventory and supply chain logistics be managed within the airport environment? So that, that's another good question. Uh, this day and age, it's, it's very difficult. Supply chain has been a bit of a disaster recently. Uh, so I think our biggest thing within the airports has been having a contingency plan in place for almost everything. If this is, is it going to be here on time? What can we do to put something temporary in place, get it open and come back as a, as a day two? We pretty much have a, a contingency in place for anything that's long lead. Um, we have a plan for, for day two items. If, if we can't open up with this particular item, we, we're just always thinking ahead and thinking, all right, if this doesn't come in, then what? So I think having a contingency plan in place, uh, also having a, a detailed submittal log so you know what's coming, what needs to, you know, when it needs to be on site. So having all that listed up front is, is huge. And just to add something a little more, if you're looking to switch because of a long lead time, uh, you always speak to your W, right? Especially with the, we could actually do an alternate of a of material, right? It's always good to communicate with us and say what is uh, acceptable, right? We, we weren't sure as one is the designs always, is, sorry, but especially with these uh, out of, uh, let's say if you're not getting it locally, you're gonna, you, it might be a long lead time. So we wanna ensure that what is comparable to the design does not affect the change of design because then that could be go back to drawings and, and changes and everything. So. Uh, we can always talk about the uh, those items of alternate switching. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next question we have is: We just got approved as an ACDVE company. What is the next step for us to be at the airport? So, best thing you can do is reach out to that info t eight at rfwconsultants.com email and just let them know that you're interested um, in becoming a tenant. Um, at the airport, they will then get you in touch with the correct parties. It, it's a little different. This is specific for construction. The ACDBE is on the uh, leasing side, correct, Ronald? Yeah, that is that's correct on the leasing side. So just email that and the email RFW at that email and they can kind of give you the direction of where to go, how to go. You can also look at the website as well. There's, in, um, I think there's instructions on there on whom to contact in regards to that specifically. Um, next question is about medical requirements and medical treatment for construction workers and who's responsible for, for it. So everybody has their safety officer. There's always going to be a safety officer on the job site. The safety officer is the person that is kind of responsible if something were to happen, if there are specific needs needed or if there's specific material in regards to medical or safety that is needed. Um, so it would be the safety officer that would be responsible for that for the subs, for the GCs um, on the project. Next question is, how can we get on the bidders list? George, I'm gonna throw this one over to you. Sure, so the best way to get on our, our, our bidders list is to give us your information. We need to get you through a pre-qualification process um, before you get to bid to us and uh, more so start work with us. So best thing to do is uh, give your information, send email or send us any um, of, of your company, someone will get a hold of you with the proper documents to get you to fill out. And then you'll be on the business list shortly after that. Yep. And it's that info T8 email. You send them a, a, a an email just noting that you're interested in bidding on the project, whether it's with Holt, whether it's with the tenant and their GC as well. I would suggest to submit your capability statement as well if you are not pre-qualified with Holt or any of the other GCs. Um, next question is, is, if you provide professional services and small businesses, do you know what type of insurance is required? So the insurance portion is very dependent on the project, the scope of work, as well as what the client requests at this time. Um, it, it, we're, I'm not sure what it may be, but once that comes out and once you get awarded, you will get um, you, you'll get the manual, you'll get the insurance requirements for the project specifically. Um, next question we have is, do you have an initiative to do businesses with MWBEs? So as we're all aware, port is very, very, um, there's a requirement for port for MWBEs. So yes, 
every person that's working out at the airports are working with MWBEs, local businesses, SDVOBs, and so forth. If you are interested in working with us, again, just send that email. Um, RFW will get you in touch with the correct persons for the proper scope that you're doing, um, and then we could go from there. I would suggest just to make sure that if you do have an MWB certificate or if you are planning to get an MWBE certificate, please visit the port website. They have instructions on how to go about obtaining your port authority MWBE certificate. Those are all the questions that we have received um, today. If anybody else has any questions or if there's anything you need clarity on, please reach out to that info T8 at rfwconsultants.com email and they'll get in touch with us. Other than that, I hope everybody enjoyed this session and have a wonderful day. Bye guys. Thank you.